Hi guys, um, I would like to do a couple of little demos for you regarding eight of the characteristics of gases. Now I'm only going to do a couple of these things, but they're just kind of neat little demos. And so I'd like for you to be able to, to watch what happens with them. So what I'm going to do is this, we're going to move this forward. And um, again, you've already seen this presentation. And, and the two things I'd like you to be able to consider is the first one, which is exert a pressure on a container. I'm going to show you a demo. There is a lab that I'm going to give you the opportunity to do for about 10 points. Use it. You'll have to do a flip grid video um, if you're interested in doing it, but it's going to use the idea of exerting a pressure. And then um, the other part of it that I want to be able to show you, and we're going to kind of move through here, is this idea that gases form homoge homogeneous mixtures. They diffuse. And so what I want to do is this. I'm going to pause really fast so I can get set up. First thing I want to do is describe the lab I'm going to ask you to do. And then um, from there, we'll actually show you how to do a setup, a real quick setup, and then I'm going to show you the other demo. So let me pause for just a second. Okay, so here's the write-up, and I will put this in um, Google Classroom when I get finished with this. Please notice it says I will be ha putting the link to the setup video, which is this one, on, on this before I give it to you. Um, but the way you're going to get credit for this would be to use your phone and Flipgrid and video the activity. Now, you don't have to start the video until you get all the way down to step number four, which is basically going to be blowing up um, what you're trying to blow up and and the idea is we understand that gases exert a pressure so let's see um, what they actually can do all right okay so I'm gonna pause again so I can move over because I'm just not sure that I can do this without okay so um, the lab itself says that this is what you're supposed to do you need to get a gallon size Ziploc bag um, if you would rather go smaller, you could use just a um, single sandwich bag. Or if you really want to extend yourself out, you could get a big 50-gallon um, or 35-gallon drum um, plastic bag. The whole point of this, the setup, is really what you're going to do. Now, this bag's already been done, and I'm going to open it up, and you're going to be able to see what has been done here. Um, the entire bag... Um, the opening was flipped over and was duct taped, duct taped from one end all the way to the other and then even around the corners because you want to seal it off entirely. Um, then what was done for this, and I'll show you how to do this in just a second, is um, a little slit the size of a straw was done in just the top layer. Sorry. Um, just in the top layer. Okay, and so then we duct taped around the straw. So let me go ahead and show it, you how to set this up on the gallon size bag. So what you're going to do is this. You're going to simply take the top, you seal it off, um, fold it over, and then get a piece of duct tape. I happen to have some Angry Bird duct tape. And I'm just going to put it across the seal onto the back side. Push it down as good as you can because you want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Um, you might want to put another little piece at the very end, but as long as you have it duct taped really well together, you're good. Okay, flip it over. Now, for this um, size bag, you probably only need one hole. Um, for the big gallon, gallon, the big bag, you're probably going to want four or five holes. So you're going to need about four or five people to um, extend. So what you, you watch what I'm doing. I'm separating my two sides, and I'm just going to take a scissors, and I'm not even going to go very far. I'm just going to click, um, if I can get my scissors to work, about this much. I've only made a whole, very, very tiny little hole here. So what am I going to do? Hopefully it's big enough. I'm going to stick the straw through it. So now it's in the bag. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take more duct tape, and I'm going to seal all the way around the straw. I do not want air coming out of the straw. So I'm going to put some duct tape underneath it. And take it around it. And you're going to probably want to do this a few times to be able to get every single hole as closed up as possible. 
I'm going to take a big piece and just put it across there. And I'm going to take one more piece, and you'll see I'll put it down on the bottom again. Because I really want to seal all the air inside of the bag. All right? So that's the setup. Um, the first thing it tells you to do is to blow in and make sure your bag is sealed. So, and you can see that the bag is starting to inflate. Okay? So that's the setup. Um, what you're going to do at that point is this. You're going to find something to stick on top of it. Um, it could be a book. It could be a couple books. If you decide to do the big gallon bag, um, you could very carefully put a person on top of it. Um, if you do that, if you do the person one, make sure you have an adult with you so that um, you can be safe. But the lab is there for you. You would not start the lab until you got to the place where you've got it all set up and you start to blow air into it. Um, the idea is gases exert a pressure. They fill a container and they exert a pressure on the outside. But can you do something with it? It's just a really fun lab and I'm going to let you go ahead and try it. I'm going to go ahead and pause so that I can get the other um, lab set up. Okay? Be right back. Okay, so um, the next demonstration I just wanted you to see for the gases is that we know that gases expand, um, well, they fill the container, but they automatically diffuse. So what you see below you is a piece of aluminum foil, and it's been made into a boat, and there's a center piece of aluminum foil right there in the middle that will keep my two liquids that I'm putting here. They're gonna, it's going to keep it separated, right? So... What you're going to notice is that there is a few clear colored drops. You can't even see them there. Um, and then there are going to be some clear colored drops that I'm going to put on this side. Right? As soon as I do that, I'm going to cover it with a glass jar. And you're just going to sit and watch what happens, all right? Because they can't, two liquids can't touch each other. Um, they're not going to be able to touch each other because of that piece of aluminum foil in the middle. But I put the other drops over there. And then I'm going to just cover these. And I put it down here because and then what you're going to do is you're going to watch to see if over the next minute or so, um, if this works the way it's supposed to, um, if you can see any changes happen on one side or the other. So... Um, Give it a few seconds, give it, you know, up to a minute, and hopefully this will work the way it's supposed to work. Um, and what I'm probably going to just do is I'm going to pause it and then let you kind of we'll pretend like it's fast forwarding. I don't think it can, but I'll go ahead and um, pass. Actually, I think I'm already starting to see a little bit there. Um, but I'm going to pause it, and then as soon as we actually see the results in it, and, and please know I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to kind of sort of let it sit here. Um, I'm seeing a change here from, from my angle, but you may not be able to see it yet. Um, I don't think I'm going to have to do that. I think it hopefully should show up in just the next little bit. It's just, unfortunately, the aluminum foil is not going to maybe let you see it as well as if I had it turned. There you go. I'm starting to see it. Look in the middle of the container on the left, if you will. Um, right, you'll see the two little shiny spots right up here. And then look right there next to where my finger is. You should be able to start seeing a pink color. And the pink color is going to get brighter and brighter as it goes. Um, from the side, it's extremely bright. What I will do is I will get my camera so that I will actually take a picture of this at the same time we're doing it. Um, and I will tell you that I am taking the picture um, right this very second snap. All right? And you should be able to see the pink. On the left side, I will attach this picture to um, the to the Google Classroom assignment so you can actually see this. This is just more of a video. 
Um, the two materials that were here, the one on the left is phenolphthalein. We use that a number of times. It's a in acid base indicator that when it becomes basic, it turns pink. All right. The material on the right was ammonium hydroxide, which is a very strong basic material. The two, they could not come in contact with each other. But what ended up happening is the ammonium filled the container and diffused so that it's now on both sides of the whole container, um, which is why you're seeing this nice pink color forming right there. The two liquids, they're still separated. The liquid's never touched, but the gas, which has the ammonia in it, which is a base, um, is what is bringing that to pink. So I just wanted to show you two examples. One of them, gases exert pressures, and there's a lab associated with that. If you want 10 points, go ahead and do the lab and send it to me on a flip grid video, and then just this demonstration, and you don't have to do anything about that one. All right? Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye.